सो हे गाइस ये वी आई क्वेश्चन नंबर 49 फ्रॉम बिल्ड अप अंडरस्टैंडिंग एक्सरसाइज ऑफ द चैप्टर करंट इलेक्ट्रिसिटी फ्रॉम पाथ फाइंडर सो या फर्स्ट लेट्स गेट द क्वेश्चन द सर्किट शोन कंसिस्ट ऑफ टू आइडेंटिकल कैपेसिटर्स 10 माइक्रोफैरेड्स ईच 1 मेगा ओम रेजिस्टर्स एंड 3 आइडियल वोल्टेज सोर्सेज ऑफ टर्मिनल वोल्टेजेस 100 वोल्ट 550 वोल्ट एंड 200 वोल्ट एंड 3 स्विचेस कैलकुलेट द अमाउंट ऑफ हीट डिसिपेटेड इन द रेजिस्टर ओवर अ लॉन्ग टाइम आफ्टर ऑल द स्विचेस आर क्लोज्ड साइमल्टेनियसली so if you want to give this question a try yourself uh, you can do it now so yeah if you want the hint here it is we can assume here that the capacitors get charged in very short interval before any substantial current flows through the resistance so if you want to try it again with this small hint uh, you can do it now so yeah now let's look at the solution so a uh, first method is let's try to use it, uh, do it using the approximation given in the hint so here we have to observe that uh, the resistance is very large and so we can assume that before much of the current flows through the resistor capacitors will get charged so basically what i'm saying here is that this is of the order of 10 to the power 6 ohms and this is of the order of 10 to the power minus 6 uh, farads so uh, current in this branch will be very less initially uh, and very less heat will uh, be dissipated in it before uh, the capacitors get charged fully so from here initial let's assume that initial steady state is something like this so the capacitors get charge of q each and uh, the uh, middle branch can be ignored and uh, this uh, even and d2 uh, batteries can be considered to be a, a net battery of e2 minus e1 so from here the charge in the capacitors initial charge the immediate charge they will get will be equals to c times v and c will be c by 2 as there are two capacitors in series so uh, the in initial internal energy stored in these two capacitors will be twice of q square by 2c and if you put in the values you get the value of u initial to be 0.025 joules so this was initially now after some time uh, it will uh, the current will start flowing in the resistance and finally uh, it will again re uh, achieve a steady state uh, after sub substantial current has passed through resistance and um, uh, it can be some seen something like this so let's assume that the potential of this point is v equals to 0 so obviously th these two points will have a potential v of e1 and e2 as there is no current pa passing and th there is just a battery connected in between and similarly of this point will be e3 as there is be no current and uh, so uh, the uh, potential of this point will be e3 so from here we can define the uh, charges in the two capacitors separately as q1 and q2 and q1 will be equals to uh, capacitance times the voltage difference of across the capacitor which will be equals to c times e3 minus e1 and q2 will be equals to c times e c times e3 minus e2 so uh, so from this uh, the final uh, energy stored in the capacitors will be equals to q square q1 square by 2c plus q2 square by 2c and it, which gives us q1 plus q2 uh, q1 square plus q2 square by 2c so this will be the final potential energy stored in the capacitors and hence while achieving a steady state charges through the different branches will be uh, as shown in the diagram so basically the charges flown through the uh, circuit in uh, whole net will be equals to q1 minus q where q is the original charge uh, in the capacitor uh, it will flow in uh, this direction and uh, q2 minus q will flow in, flow in this direction and q1 plus q2 minus 2q will flow in this direction so uh, in this process the batteries will have also done uh, a work of magnitude e uh, the potential difference of the battery times the charge flown through it and its direction gives us the sign of the work done so from here the heat dissipated uh, so now the heat dissipated in the resistors can be found by taking difference of final and initial potential energies and work done by the batteries so from here the heat uh, heat dissipated will be equals to uh, q1 plus q2 minus 2q times e3 which is the positive work done by e3 and it will go totally into heat then uh, minus q1 minus q times e1 which will be the work done by this battery e1 and similarly q2 minus q times e2 this these will be the total work done by batteries which are shown here and uh, this uh, and uh, subtracting the change in the potential energies will give us the total work done so from here uh, we can uh, this is the final expression for the work heat dissipated in the resistor and on substituting the values you can clearly see uh, you can get the value of heat dissipated to be 1.6 joules 
so this was the a more uh, uh, elegant solution and uh, one which uh, had to be basically thought in this question but now let's look at the second method uh, method by direct integration so here let's assume the charges on the capacitors and the current in the different branches we have shown so from here we have assumed that at any time t the uh, uh, charge in capacitor this this capacitor is q1 and this capacitor is q2 and their polarities will be plus and minus as shown here and initially it was opposite polarity so the current uh, through the different branches at this instant can be shown as dq1 by dt and dq2 by dt and uh, so this will be the circuit and now using kirchhoff's voltage law we can uh, write the uh, loop equation as e1 plus q1 by c plus dq1 by dt plus dq2 by dt times r minus e3 equals to 0 so basically this is written for this loop and here we can see that uh, the potential difference across this is E1, across this is Q1 by C, and across this is DQ1 plus DQ2 by uh, T uh, times R, and across this is minus E3. So this is the first equation. Similarly, this equation is written for this loop, and this equation is written for this whole loop. Although this isn't needed, but just it is just written there. But, and if we solve from here, uh, we can land into huge mess and even the answers would be wrong because we would observe closely that this does not allow q1 and q2 to be zero simultaneously uh, as can be seen from the third equation so from here we can see that in in this equation we can clearly see that q1 and q2 if q1 and q2 equals to a zero at the same time uh, the equality here cannot hold so this is uh, uh, these three equations are just not possible but uh, q1 and q2 are both uh, zero initially uh, as we know that initially it is uncharged so this problem is arising because uh, just as i said in the first solution it initially the charges are getting charged very quickly and we will have to consider some resistance in the capacitors even if it might be negligible but uh, it will help in the initial few uh, moments where the capacitors will get charged so now uh, let's consider a small resistance of the both the capacitors and let's consider this circuit as shown so here i have considered the uh, internal resistance of the two capacitors to be r each and uh, the uh, notation is mostly as same as the uh, last diagram so again here we can write the kirchhoff voltage equations as uh, there will be only two equations are th as there are two loops and we can write the third equation also but it will just uh, not be useful so similarly writing as previous only the additional term here will be dq1 by dt times r as there is a new resistance small r and similarly uh, this equation so we get the two equations and now we have to solve for q1 and q2 but uh, solving for q1 and q2 separately is very tough uh, so what we can notice from here is that we have to find uh, basically we have to find dq1 plus dq2 by dt as this is the total current in this branch and that is only given gonna give us the uh, heat dissipated in the resistor so uh, to get that we can see that here uh, it it simply can be added and we can see that dq1 by uh, dt plus dq2 by dt uh, separates out very easily uh, on adding these and uh, on adding this we get this equation and uh, uh, writing in this way that uh, assuming q1 plus q2 to be a variable capital q and uh, that's what i written here and we can observe that basically q1 plus q2 is the charge going through the resistor and uh, capital r and it gives us the current we are needed to find so i have assumed q1 plus q2 equals to capital q so basically we get a differential equation in uh, which is sep uh, very easily separable in uh, q and t so from here on separating the variables we get that dq by uh, twice of e3 minus e1 minus e2 minus q1 by c equals to dt by 2r plus uh, 2 capital r plus small r and on in integrating this we get this value and on uh, solving for cap, uh, charge q at any time we get that charge q at any time is equal to c times 2 e3 minus e1 minus e2 times 1 minus e to the power t by 2r plus small r times c so uh, this is the charge uh, of flowing flown through the uh, resistance at any time uh, at any time t so the current at any time t can be found by differentiating this and on differentiating this we get that the current is equals to this value so the heat dissipated uh, uh, through this uh, each in a small time interval can be given as a power times dt and the power will be equals to i square times r and i square times r is this value and uh, so integrating this over time 0 to infinity gives us the total heat dissipated in the resistance 
so basically uh, on solving this uh, slightly and here uh, here it has been simplified in the way that i have assumed 2r to be very very greater than r so here r, small r can be can be neglected so we get that the value of heat dissipated equals to 2e3 minus e1 minus e2 whole squared by 4r times integral 0 to infinity e to the power minus t by rc and uh, the integral of this value is equals to 1 by rc uh, substituting the limits uh, sorry uh, rc so uh, when rc comes out the r cancels out and we get the value of heat finally to be c times 2e3 minus e1 minus e2 whole squared over 4 so the total heat and on substituting the values here uh, for capacitance as 10 to the power minus 5 farads e3 is 550 volts e1 is 100 volts and e2 equals to 200 volts we get the final value of heat to be 1.6 joules so this was the final answer and uh, in the second method we get uh, there are many manipulations uh, and if you uh, directly do it by this method it it is very uh, it would give you land you into huge troubles so uh, and i also face troubles in this uh, a lot while solving so second one was a uh, very enlightening i felt and the first solution is uh, the most common one so yeah i hope you all like the video please like uh, like share and subscribe thank you